Hello everyone and welcome back to another art video. Today I'm doing another digital speed paint, I haven't done one in a good while. And I've only done two so far I think. Anyway, it's on the theme as you saw the best smile because I was looking at my Clip Studio paint home page thing and I found this competition that was being advertised called the best well that was on the theme the best smile so this is what that inspired me to do i still need to upload a photo to my instagram i don't expect to win or even like even get noticed but it's no harm trying you know and it pushed me to create a digital do some you know digital art practice create a digital piece As far as sketching, so what was my process like? I, as with all my great ideas, I came up with it after I'd like closed my eyes and was trying to go to sleep at night. It's like my brain just starts trying to solve problems or come up with ideas that, or are not artistic ones that I come up with, come up against during the day. So my idea was. To do with how on Zoom, obviously now everyone's smiling. It's all it's it's good that we've got Zoom at this time, but the best smile will be when we get to see everyone in person again. You know, get to hug everyone, and that's what the whole thing's based off. So down at the bottom, you've got it's all the same person all the way through, but you've got a person like looking at their laptop screen. They're on Zoom with their friends, and or. I mean, Zoom, whatever conferencing app or video chat app you're using. And then you've got her hugging her laptop. It, and then imagining hugging her friend. Or I think that, I think in my mind that's her granny. And you'll see it more later on when I start detailing the faces on the laptop more. It's the person in the bottom right corner of the laptop screen that she's hugging in the top. I took a lot of photos of myself in different poses to get the poses down for this. For example, like the head looking down at the laptop, I got a photo, I got my mom to take a picture of me at that angle. And then also me, um, me, it's not me in the picture, also the picture of the girl hugging the laptop. I tried drawing that at the beginning, but I needed to get a reference photo to really understand how to do that. But I think that's probably my favorite part of the drawing. I really liked how it turned out. Like just, it looks so cozy the way she's cuddling it and yeah. This is the first really big scale digital piece I've done in a while, or just in general. I don't think I've done anything like this before, where it's completely just out of my head. It's not all based on one reference. I've used multiple references to come up with this idea. I think that it was good putting in the just blobs of purple to start guiding me as to how the shading would go, because I think I have a tendency not to make things contrasting enough and extreme enough when it comes to shading. <laughs> I started trying to just draw a load of sunflowers freehand, but I realized that it'd be much more enjoyable, much easier and look much better if I just spent a more time on one sunflower and then repeated it. One of the perks of digital art. <laughs> And to do with the sunflowers, I knew I wanted some some sort of pattern, but I wasn't feeling like roses. I wanted something much more sunny and bright because at the end of the day, the theme is smile and sunflowers make me think of smiling. So it's adding that brightness in. And because I was using sunflowers, it really influenced the color scheme of the picture. It's very much like yellow and purple. Are they complementary colors of each other? Let me check the colour wheel quickly. I think they are. Colour... I'm looking it up now. Colour wheel... Images. Yeah. Yellow's across from purple, so... I've got a complementary colour scheme going on in this picture. I think I added in a little bit of green too. Which is like beside yellow, so... I'm sure colour theory makes sense stuff. Anyway! 
just did what I felt. Um, see how I like shrunk those sunflowers down even tinier to go in the little. It was probably really unnecessary because by the end of it, like I made, I boosted this, the brightness on the computer screen to make it look like it was glowing in the darkness. And so a lot of the detail I put into the people got a bit lost. Oh there, that's the grandmother down in that bottom corner. In my mind anyway. You can interpret this whatever way you want. <laughs> There's a lot going on, so it's probably sort of open for interpretation. Or maybe that closes it to interpretation. Either way, lots of fun. One thing that <laughs> was sort of hard during this is because I was working with so much and there was so much involved, so many aspects, so many elements of this picture, that I ended up getting so confused later on with what layer and because I introduced blending modes and all this kind of stuff so I was trying to colour something in but the colour I selected off the screen wasn't the same as what I ended up putting down and all this kind of stuff because of the blending modes. At this point it's all still looking pretty flat. I guess this is sort of like the ugly stage of the drawing because when you get the sketch done it's like wow that's a cool sketch love all that but then you start adding in the colour and then there's like this huge period where you're just waiting until the colour gets introduced and more shading and light and dark. But you gotta, gotta start somewhere and just trust the process. The more time you spend on it, the more things will come together. I, I think I started this last Sunday and it took a week of work off and on, I'd say. Maybe not a week, but like five days. That sun was really cool, playing with that and trying to use blending modes to my advantage to make it look really bright. I love blending modes, it's so cool. There's so many things about digital art I've yet to explore. That bit just there was really good for like boosting that contrast. I really like did some bold things there. There's also this battle always going on whether to keep the light, the sketches or to get rid of them completely. And I don't think I ever fully get rid of the sketch in my finished pieces. At least, I mean, I haven't done much, dig like enough digital art to really know what I do yet, but I tend to leave it in for a little bit of that roughness. And sometimes I like even color it in or just rub it out in certain areas, leave it in other ones. The f this face is something I went back to a lot and at this point I was thinking oh wow this is looking pretty there's, there's quite a lot of depth in this looks pretty good but then later on I go back and and I because the nose ended up looking pretty flat so then I really went to town a little bit later on to boost it but then it sort of looked weird beside that more cartoony face of the small one and by the time I realised that the small one hadn't had as much attention as the bigger one, I did not want to do any more on this picture. But because it's to be viewed from... Not, you're not meant to like zoom into every single detail though, that would be pretty cool because it's nice to appreciate the details I put in. <laughs> it, it looks fine. And I suppose it's a smaller part of the drawing, so over detailing it isn't gonna give your eyes anywhere to rest and it would just, not every part of the drawing has to have the same level of, what's it called? Ah, oh, what's that word? Um, where you, render, rendering, that's the word. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this arm, the, this whole back section hug was probably the biggest challenge in this drawing. Trying to make it, for one thing, look natural, and for another thing, actually look like a hug. When, if someone just glances at it, they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, they're hugging in the back, instead of just, what's that blob going on in the background? And me, like, at the first in the sketch, it looks really good, like, she looks like, like a really tight, like, loving hug. But as the colour carried on and the colour blocking happened, and then I put a bed frame in the way of the arms, it started to get 
more and more difficult to see so <laughs> on um i showed some of my friends it and asked like what should i do and like some of them said you should because then i like did two options where one of them i changed it a little bit and had one of the arms going up. you'll see it all in a minute but where i had took took the arm away that's going up around the girl and dropped it down and like had more of her like chest area exposed versus the other way that it was. But I came upon a solution where I just shortened the grandmother's sleeve and put the grandmother's hand like coming around the, the girl's head so that you could see more of the interaction because it got pretty lost. I mean, it also didn't help that I just like threw a big bun in the way but and i put it there to hide the hands and stuff so that i wouldn't have to draw them but that backfired because then it, the picture was harder to read <laughs> but at least all this like dark area and like the amount of hair that's there and all the purple in the background gives the eye plenty of places to rest it's not over detailed this drawing and there's a very clear place where your eye gets drawn up and around like following where all the yellow is, following where the girl's story is. The lighting, I didn't overthink the lighting in this drawing. I was like, okay, there's a sun over there, stick it in, it's like glowing on the side of her face, darker over here. And then I <laughs> included the shine from the computer screen, which meant there was another light source, but I just didn't worry too much about it. I'll have to do more work on lighting and stuff, but this is a good step. I just sort of try to use my intuition and do what seems right. Actually, I, you might think there was a huge jump there where, whoa, all these things were done. Didn't you see you do that? I didn't see you boost the light on this stuff. Didn't see you render that face. That's because I missed out a huge chunk of the recording because my computer is like really labors with any sort of screen recording. Like right now, as I'm voice recording it's screaming at me <laughs> the fans worrying so some of it's missing but this video is long enough as it is <laughs> right here i think i'm getting nearing the end yeah i just played around with the like i just wanted to see what all of these correction layers do because i'd used the color correction layer and that was so cool and then i was like there's all these other correction layers so played around with them and it came up with something pretty cool. I'm really glad that there's correction layers and all this kind of stuff. Oh, digital art is so cool. It's so forgiving. And you can just come up with really cool stuff. So I really enjoyed that. I guess I better go post this on my Instagram now, both to advertise my YouTube video and to enter that competition. Let's see what happens in the Celsius Clip Studio paint rules competition guide thing. It said that they're taking likes into account but they're not taking likes into account or something like that so maybe like the my up my uh the artwork on my instagram to see if that raises my chances at all <laughs> anyway thanks for watching guys bye have a good week